Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monster's Den. So there's no this tonight because we're doing Batman. So Batman... We need some cape. bat wings. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. So uh, we're going to be ranking the Batman film franchise 10 films. We're not including Justice League in this. We're not including anime, anime films or animated films, I should say. So the 10 main films. And we've got in the house, The Birthday Boy. Craig Kaminsky. Woohoo! Birthday. Happy birthday to you. 29. Happy God bless 29. him. It's yes. perennially yes. 29. You know? Looking good. Age, ageless. <laughs> yes, ageless. <laughs> That's right. Well, happy birthday, Craig. We got Rich Catino. Yeah. Woohoo! We've got the King Carvalho. And. That's awesome. Dude, that's wow. awesome. Hello, fellow. Citizens of Gotham City, it's Batman. Here to rank the Batman movies. There you go. Batman 1966 is in the nice. house. Dude, that rocks. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm in the Bat Cave. Oh, yeah. That's you right. don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. And you sure don't know where it is. I think I know what state it's in, but uh, that's about all I know. <laughs> so, 10 films. Uh, what we're going to do to kind of keep this going along, because there's, there's five of us and there's 10 films, uh, e on each turn, everyone's going to name their, like, we're going to start 10, 9, and 8, then we'll go to the next person, 10, 9, and 8, and we'll go until we get to everybody's number one. So on every turn, everybody's going to name their next three until we get to the last one. So we're, we're going to start with the birthday boy. We're going to go Rich, well, I'm sorry, we're going to go Craig, Rich, Batman, Chris, and myself, and we'll go round and round until we're done. So, Craig, you're a bottom three of the uh, Batman films. All right, thank you. And uh, since this is my birthday, I, I broke out the big guns of my McAllen 15. And uh, and guys, I, I just wanted to say this is a, a, a great way to cap off my birthday. And uh, Pete, I want to just personally thank you so much that... Uh, a, a year ago, when I turned 49, I actually, you know, uh, I hadn't uh, met you guys yet. And I and I thought, well, if I go volunteer at the 24 hour th marathon, maybe I'll maybe I'll get a chance to say hi to Pete and Chris. And, uh, you know, and 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 that's all. And here a, a year later, I've been, uh, you know, we're we're uh, uh, fr all we're friends and I've been on the show uh, many times. So I'm so appreciative and thank thank you so much. It's a great way to spend my birthday. Pleasure to have yeah, you, Craig. With you, with you guys. Addition. So a lot of a lot of love going around. So uh, great addition to the team. To and uh, for those of you watching who are coming out to SOT Fall Fest, every person on this Zoom is going to be there next Saturday. So uh, we look forward to seeing you all and hanging out in Poughkeepsie, New York. So uh, and Craig, happy yes. birthday again, man. I may not be there, but Bruce Wayne might. That's oh. right. That's right. Uh, well, that is good to know. For uh, as you know, there's uh, you know ten ten films, uh, some good, some not so good, and uh, but uh, so we inevitably start at the bottom. My personal least favorite, I am going with Batman Forever, and it is primarily for the reason of uh, Jim Carrey at his Jim Carreyest in this in this movie teamed up with. Tommy Lee Jones as the Riddler and Two Face, respectively. Who I, to, to me, the viewer it seemed like they were in a competition as to who could be more annoying. Uh, I just, and I never, I never saw this movie fully. I didn't see it theatrically, and I didn't even rent this or or anything at the time. And and I know this this movie was a big hit, uh, considering. Batman Returns was a relative stumble uh, compared to the Batman 1989 movie. But uh, just Val Kilmer in his only time as Batman, uh, I, I'm I, I, I didn't care for him as much as, Bat as Batman. He was okay as Bruce Wayne, in, in my opinion, but not, but not great. And just everything about the movie, and I'll, I'm going to have very similar criticisms of the 80s and 90s movies they have they all had this look that you could tell that they were all done in a studio and even when they're standing outside it looks like you're inside and the cityscapes look just look fake 
the car chase scenes have no sense of speed because you can see, I mean, there's parts where the Batmobile has to go around the building and it's, you can tell it's not going very fast. Unlike in the, the Christopher Nolan films that, you know, have a, a much more sense of uh, fun and you know that there are little things like they're standing outside. And I, I just, uh, this could not really dig into this movie a whole lot nicole kidman is dr chase meridian and literally at the end of the movie she's tied up as the damsel in distress and i just i, I don't buy that from her uh, but the single best thing about this movie is that this is a reunion of val kilmer and michael goff uh who started as Al, uh, alfred in the in the in four of the films as two of the actors in one of the funniest movies of the 80s if any if you didn't get to see it and that is top secret uh it, it is by the same people who did airplane so it's just a joke a, a joke a second and uh, i believe it was val kilmer's first movie and michael goff plays dr paul flamand the leader of the french resistance it is such a hilarious movie and it was it's nice to see that they were reteamed in this movie but just everything the the opening sequence where batman is like getting dressed and it's just you see that the the nipples and the quick zoom in on his butt and on his cod piece i mean it was just whoa what is what is going on here so yeah, I, I I I thought Batman Forever was kind of a shitter. My number nine, I am going with the pretty much heavily maligned and rightfully so Batman and Robin from uh, 1997. Uh, I the reason I did a lot of people usually have this movie at the bottom. Perhaps you guys will. Uh, I was not quite as annoyed with Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, little freezisms or whatever you know uh you mean, ice chill, you mean chill ice, wasn't cool <laughs> ice to see you or uh cool down you know no i mean uh, yeah that was kind of stupid and bane is really stupid in this movie i mean and again with the theme with things look fake the the cityscapes at the at the end when bane is setting up what are bombs i mean they look like plastic uh icicles I, where there's icicles everywhere that just looks so goofy and fake. It's almost like you're watching a, a Broadway show of Batman and it, it's, it's silly beyond belief. George Clooney, again, in his only, uh, only turn as Batman, it's one of those where you look at it on paper and perhaps you think, you know, that, Oh, this, yeah, that would be pretty good. I didn't think he was a good Bruce Wayne or a good Batman uh, in, in this which was just, I mean, I don't think he was quite the star at this point that he would become in a few years, but I, I, I didn't. And then th um, throwing in more Robin, who was who had been introduced in Batman Forever. Let's throw in Batgirl also, a and then Alfred is on TV most of the time. I mean, or he, uh, I, it's just, it's it, the movie's a mess. But again, I, I thought. Batman Forever was more annoying just with all the, the Jim Carrey-isms uh, and that in it. Uh, my number eight, I'm going with Batman Returns uh, from 1992. This I, I did not see in the theater. I remember renting this at a friend's house, and I have not seen this movie probably in about 30 years. Uh, and it, it doesn't seem to be rerun very much on television, so it's almost a tough one to come by. Uh, it did... It was a, a little bit of a step backwards in terms of box office as compared to the first Michael Keaton movie. And again, this is directed by Tim Burton. I had mentioned before to, to Chris uh, some weeks back when I watched this, I, I had said this movie was it, it's a Tim Burton movie that Batman just happens to pop into every every once in a while. And I just did I could not get into it. It's all all the all four of the 80s movies they're all about the same length they're all about two hours they're like within one minute of each other and but yet this movie seemed way longer and just way uh, just more of a slog to get through in in my opinion and again these scenes where it's supposed to be outside the beginning of the movie they're putting the baby down the down the river i mean it looks like you're watching phantom of the opera or something like that on broadway it just had that fake look to it and um, Craig, real quick, not to interrupt you, but I'm looking up the locations and stuff for the first one. It says 18 sound stages were used. Yeah, I mean, like there, there was so much shot inside, inside. and then there's some other things that say there's 
there's some outsides for like exteriors and stuff and a couple interiors, but yeah, wow, that's a lot of sound stages for a film. And, and you can tell just the lighting is just artificial looking and it just it just doesn't look right. But my the worst thing in uh, the way that I thought of this was kind of just the complete disrespect I, I feel towards the Burgess Meredith penguin that in certain part in, in there's a part where he's getting a makeover for his run for mayor and they say oh here, here have a little a cigarette holder and some gloves and it's it's it, you're you're basically saying oh to make him look like the penguin that most people are familiar with the Burgess Meredith penguin or or perhaps from cartoons and he like bites the girl and looks like, you know, he looks completely different. He's all uh, fat and slob, eating raw fish and slobbering. I, I, from reading uh, on this, I believe uh, McDonald's, I guess, had the toys to go along with this. And they said that they couldn't sell them because uh, he looked so gross uh, that <laughs> kids, didn't, kids didn't, want, uh, didn't want them or they thought, how could we you know, have a tie in with food with something that looks like this? So, but the, and, I, I, you know, for, and for all the talk over the years of Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, I mean, it was, I, I, it was all right. But again, I'm watching this and it's like, why is she evil? I mean, if it, I, I can understand her being evil or, you know, wanting to get revenge on Christopher Walken, but I don't see what her beef was with Batman, what he stopped her from blowing up his, uh, Christopher Walken's department store. And yeah, I mean, I just, I, I didn't get it that, you know, why she was really a villain at, at all in this and and so I, I it just this one just didn't do anything for me and everything i've read with this says it's so beloved and and now it's thought of as uh one of the better sequels and i don't and not in my not in my opinion i just could not could not get into this so again my number eight batman returns all right rich yes oh i'm just checking my notes <laughs> I was gonna say you're you're up, Rich. Dude, there's so many there's dude, there's there's paper and paper and notes and it's just too much. It's way I too got, much. Oh, this is all I got, Catino. This is it. I got I got I got, I got notes for you. It's from brain. <laughs> it's too much, man, but I'm good. I'm ready. So I'm going with Batman and Robin as my 10. I, I wrote down some I had to write down a bunch of things. Um George Clooney. As Batman, I thought it was just too much fun, no depth, and just dry. Just It was just too much fun. Same thing with the other actors. It was, the whole thing was just too fun. It was kind of like the 1966 movie, but updated. Or that, what year was that? 1997. Yeah. Oh, 1997. So it's like it's an updated, you know, fun, comical kind of version of that. 30 years later, still is campy. Yes, too campy. The costumes were like updated versions of those. They look like Halloween costumes, you know, with a lot of padding. Didn't like, didn't like those. I didn't mind the team up aspect of it. I like it when there's team ups like that. So having Batman and Robin and Batgirl against the villains, that worked for me. That's probably the best thing that worked for me because I like team ups. But the the Batmobile but, looked like shit. It looked like oh, a hearse. It, it, it looked like yeah. it, it looked like 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 an ice cream truck. You know, I mean, it was like so long, and I mean, it was just yeah. ridiculous looking. Yep. Uh, the color scheme is awful. It's too bright. The neons are just, it's like going into a New York City club just all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just way too bright, too much color going on, just way too much. Fuck and Bane. Is way... What's that? Fucking those, two movies, those two movies he did, that, it's that <laughs> style. Um, Bane is, is awful, way too exaggerated and cartoonish. Didn't like him. Um, let's see. Yeah, those are my main points that I didn't like about it. And like I said, George Clooney, I thought was not the best Batman. Um, who played Robin again? What's his name? Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, I thought he was the best out of out of all of them as working for a one. character. And Arnold or Schwarzenegger, you know, he does too much of his Arnold one-liners, too corny. Uh, so yeah, those reasons. That's at my ten. Cool. Not one that I ever revisit. I don't even have it on DVD. Cool. Um, next one is Batman Forever. A lot of the same things you said, Craig. Um, I wrote down Tommy Lee is like a sidekick to the Riddler, basically. You know, that pairing. He just plays second fiddle to him pretty much. I actually like Jim Carrey as the Riddler. 
I thought he was pretty wacky. He had that wacky personality, like, uh, who was the actor in 1960? Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin, yeah. Yes, he reminded me of him a lot, and I, I love that movie for what it is. So he reminded me of him, him a lot. He had that personality. Uh, also, the production design is way too bright, again. Um, Time Lee Jones' makeup is awful, way too bright. It doesn't look natural. Looks like a Halloween prosthetic, you know, on his face. That doesn't really work. Um, Val Kilmer's, I don't know, I didn't find him anything too special. As a Batman, he was okay, but not memorable, I don't think. Not terrible. I think he's better than George Clooney, but not. I, I could see why they didn't cast him again. You know, it was okay for that one movie, and then they moved on. Um, yeah, those are the main points I picked out about that one. So that's, one, that's why that one's in my nine. Now, number eight. I don't know if everybody's going to agree with this one, but... <laughs> Dark Knight Rises is my eight because I like the those three movies. I like the direction of them. I like the, the colors. I like the seriousness of it. I like the way Batman is able to be Batman and Bruce Wayne. You know, he balances between the two. But I was hoping for a proper Bane, and I didn't get it. So that was the biggest letdown. You're putting a, a cool character like Bane in there. And it's just a guy that's strong, right? He's got that thing on his face. But what does it do? Is it helping him breathe? I don't know. It's not connected to anything. Did they explain that? Did they you explain I mean? that in the movie? It's, um, it's, I, I looked it up on Wikipedia. You know, in the, yeah. in the original bat, in the original Bane, uh, he gets he gets jacked up with his muscles. Right. From the yeah. mm-hmm. uh, according to Wikipedia, um, the Bane in uh, Dark Knight Rises has that mask and it feeds some kind of medicine in him because he's always in pain and the, the, whatever it feeds into him through the mask uh, eliminates the pain. But do we know that? Do we learn that in the movie? I don't remember. I I read it online. Now, whether that's wrong, I don't know. I'm just saying that's what I read. Yeah. I don't 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 know if they ever stated it officially. I don't think they did either. Yeah. Yeah, He knocks it it, like you see like air come out when he, when he, at at the end of the movie, when he knocks one of the thingies out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's not Bane. And for an updated movie, which came out in what year was that? 2012. 12. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting a proper Bane with the technology and ability for costumes and prosthetics and everything else, you know? Well, Chris and I were talking about that the other day. I mean, you can't tell me they couldn't have found a professional wrestler who's like right. six foot four exactly. and got exactly. some. I mean, come on, you got it. I because, mean, nothing against Tom Hardy. I thought he did a good well, job yes. of what he did. Yeah. But, but yeah. Jeep Swenson, who was the wrestler in uh, whatever, the Batman and Robin, uh, right? Was that the one where Bane? The, yeah. Batman he looked, he couldn't act. And obviously, that's why he didn't have any lines, but he right. fucking looked the part. Yeah. yeah right. Huge. He looked, he right. looked massive. He looked right. like he, he could couldn't fit through a door frame. But when we te- have technology now, you can make him pump up. He doesn't have to 100%. be ridiculous, but let him do his thing. Let him have the, the, the hoses that go to it. Let's see the purpose of it. Right. You know, change the color scheme so it's more darker to fit in with those, you know, those three movies. But they didn't do it. So for me, it was a, a real letdown. So that's why I turned into my number eight. And at the end of a trilogy, too, I'm like, this is the end of your trilogy with this. So, yeah, not a big fan of that one. All right. Well, I know he's going to be a little biased here, but Batman, what do you got for the bottom three? Yeah. Batman. It's Batman's turn to talk <laughs> about Batman. I am Batman. If I wasn't Batman, could I do this? Oh, it's a juicy. <laughs> I think not. All right. My number 10. I'm going to try to be quick so this show isn't as long as some of these movies. Yeah, some of them are fucking long. Batman versus Superman. The Mm. Dawn of Justice coming in at number 10. Why are they fighting each other? I do not know. I know George Reeves. I knew George Reeves. We were friends. And they call it the Dawn of Justice. Why are they starting the Dawn of the Justice League with an already old Batman? I never understood that. If they wanted an older Batman, they could have called me on the bat phone. I'm here. And there is a lesson here, Robin. There is a lesson. Sometimes a filmmaker will try so hard to make a film epic 
he forgets to make it entertaining. And that is the case with this. It is not entertaining at all. But wait, real quick. Wasn't there an Easter egg? I'm sorry, guys. Wasn't there an Easter egg for Robin in that movie? Uh, kind of. They show a statue that was painted by the Joker right. on a. Uh, it's either a statue or a costume, a Robin costume. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, you know, uh, Jamie or Batman is right. Uh, it is a, an older Batman. <laughs> they even say in, during that movie that he yeah. was Batman for 20 years in that film. Oh, yeah, true. But the problem with the, the DC movies, like, I know this is a side thing, but real quick, you put an Easter egg in there, right? Do we explain it? Do we follow it up in another movie? Has it happened beforehand? Well, no, we're just going to throw stuff in the movie and we're not going to do anything with it later. I guess that's right. why it's an Easter egg. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it's hard not to talk about this movie without talking about the Martha scene. Oh. It's like the moronic version of Rosebud. <laughs> but I do believe that there is nothing in this world that can't be fixed with a back spray. Nothing. So I have come up with a back spray to fix this movie. Movies can be fixed with back sprays. I have here a Martha repellent back spray. You spray it on the movie. You rub it in. The scene is gone. The movie is less bad. Solved, citizens of Gotham, solved. Number nine, Batman and Robin. This is not my Robin, not the Robin I know. This Robin thinks with his pecker a little too often, if you know what I mean. Now, I remember seeing this in the theater in 1997. <laughs> You're smoking marijuana. I do not condone that. Please, children of Gotham City, stay in school. Do not do drugs. But I did eat some brownies that Aunt Harriet made. I did not know what she put in them. Then I had about six or seven and went to the movies. <laughs> and I got to tell you, this movie kind of ruined Batman's buzz. Batman wanted out of the theater ASAP. People say my movie is pretty campy. But not once did I drive my Batmobile down the arm of a statue and jump off the hand. Not <laughs> one did I jump out of a moving rocket ship and use the doors as a surfboard. Not once. But uh, out of all the ridiculous things in this movie, what people like to focus on are the Batsuit nipples. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, what's the difference between Batsuit nipples and bat suit eyebrows, not really a lot. But I have here bat suit nipples, repellent, bat spray. You spray it on, you rub it in. The Seeing a pattern on. here. <laughs> Number six, I'm going to agree with Rich, fine citizen of Gotham City. Eight. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, I think you jumped ahead a little bit. Wait, yeah. I thought that was eight. Wasn't that eight? Yeah. No, yeah. That's, eight. That should be. Batman's and, eight, right? Yeah, that was eight. Ten, nine, eight. Or, he said six, eight. though. Ten, nine, eight. Yeah, yeah but you, you said six. Batman doesn't know how to count. <laughs> You're jumping from eight to six. Oh, did I say six? Yeah, you, you said used, six, Batman. Yeah. Batman, used, Batman does not know how to count. You Batman used number of the Electric Company with Spider-Man. You used uh, Batman number eight. repellent. Uh, I think Spider-Man was going to get bigger eye holes. You can see better. Yeah. They never called Batman for the Electric Company. They wanted Spider-Man. They said I talk too much. All right, number eight, The Dark Knight Rises. This is not my Gotham in this movie. There is nothing gothic about the Gotham in this movie. It looks like Metropolis to me. And Anne Hathaway, as Catwoman, she is no Julie Newmar. She is no Lee Merriweather, and she is no Eartha Kitt. Very little sex appeal. And Christopher Nolan tries to do something in this movie where he tries to keep it real and campy at the same time. You cannot have it real and campy at the same time. You have to choose one or the other. How does he keep it campy? <laughs> Out of the many problems with this movie with logic, Bruce Wayne breaks his back. And how do they fix back? By punching him in the back. 
fixes his broken back. That doesn't work. I thought that's what chiropractors did. I was going to say, what about a chiropractor? And I rewatched hang him up and it's like a salami and the second punch time. him. Fear not, citizens of Gotham. I have here. Oh Jesus, what is this one? Punching someone in the back while they hang from a rope is as good as having surgery. Repellent bat spray. Probably needed a bigger bottle for that one. You rub it in. The scene is gone. Still a lot of ridiculous scenes left, but at least that one is gone. Solved. On to you, next citizen of Gotham City. All right. Thank you, Bax. Chris. Very good, Batman. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Thanks uh, for always for having me. I did grab a couple Batman collectibles. I'll, I'll, um, I'll do them a couple each round. There's my uh, vintage 1970s Batman alarm clock. I did. I I have hundreds and hundreds of Batman fucking gadgets and toys, but I only grabbed the shit that was in the bedroom because I was lazy. Uh, these are the, the Batman watches, which I don't I don't have a watch. Uh, this is a I had this as a kid, but I I picked one up off eBay a couple years ago. This is a vintage Batman cake topper, very similar to the 1966 ideal Batman figure, but this one's a cake topper. I got the. Um, the 1970s Mego uh, Batman and Robin Bendies. I have every Mego toy from the 70s, but I was too lazy to dig them all up. Uh, color forms? Batman the vintage color form kit. Wow. Uh, vintage puzzles. I thought I was cool with my shirt hanging here. Huh. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll do the rest later. Um, but yeah, um, man, I fucking love Batman. Batman was my first love. Before Godzilla and monster movies and rock and roll, it was fucking Batman. Um, so I love Batman. And yeah, some of these movies, they kind of suck. And I did rewatch all 10 just for this episode. And in fact, I broke a vow because I saw my number 10 movie. I saw it in a the theater at midnight and I fucking hated it. And I vowed to never watch it again. Uh, and I rewatched it the other day. And I'm like, maybe I was too harsh on it. No, maybe I was tired because I, I watched it at midnight because years ago, kids, you had, when a movie opened, you couldn't go at like six o'clock. You had to go first showing was at midnight. But no, uh, uh, it still sucks. 2012's Dark Knight Rises. It's fucking awful. This is an abomination. I don't know how anybody likes this. This is like a franchise killer on the size uh, of The Last Jedi. Uh, Jamie mentioned the back thing. Rich made some great points. I mean, the whole movie, the, the entire premise is fucking stupid because the movie opens and Batman is retired for eight years. That's fucking bullshit. Batman is the Ric Flair or Terry Funk of crime fighters. He would never fucking retire. I mean, that's why they have the whole Batman Beyond thing, because when his body's too fucking old, he'll still keep fighting crime, but just by helping somebody. Yeah, I mean, Jamie mentioned or Batman mentioned the back thing, uh, which is so fucking stupid. Bane has this whole scheme to trap 3,000 cops in the sewers. And they're in the sewers for fucking months. And then after five months, they get the cops out of the sewers, but they're totally clean. They haven't slept or showered in five months, but they're ready to fucking wage war Braveheart style with the, the crooks in, in, uh, in Gotham City. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. You know, again, Nolan does that stupid thing where, you know, a, a citizen of Gotham City has a detonator. He did the same thing in The Dark Knight. Uh, you know, 30 million people are going to die in Gotham City. So Joseph Gordon-Levitt has four kids run to houses and knock on the doors and tell them to leave because the bomb's going to go off. If if they, they built this reactor, they say in the beginning, Wayne Enterprises spent all this money to build this reactor, but now they're afraid to use it because it could be turned into a bomb. Then why did you fucking, why didn't you build it to begin with? Uh, you know, the thing that to me is completely unforgivable. Batman gets his ass kicked by Bane. And at the end of the movie, when we, we finally want to see uh, Batman kick the shit out of Bane, nope, Catwoman has to step in and shoot him. Um, you know, then of course there's Batman blowing up a nuclear bomb six miles off the coast of Gotham City, and we see at the move at the end of the movie, oh, everything's fine in Gotham. No fallout, no nuclear winter, everything, everything's fucking fine. And then at the end, again, an abomination. Batman retires to Paris. There's no fucking retiring for Batman. This is it, man. This is it's a lifelong 
war waged on crime. Christopher Nolan and his brother are assholes. They don't know anything about Batman. Batman would never fucking retire. So fuck you guys. You suck. And that movie sucks. That's my number 10. Number nine, Batman, Batman and Robin from 1997. Yeah, it sucks. It looks terrible. Clooney looks terrible as fucking both Wayne and, and Batman. The costumes are terrible. The whole movie is filled with puns and jokes. The, the one part I liked is when Batman is arguing with Robin and he goes, ah, this is why Superman works alone. I thought that was really cool. It's a good line. The Batmobile looks like shit. Batgirl is fucking, they look, all the costumes look terrible. They're all shiny and silver. And, and they're, multi, they're multicolored too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's uh, ridiculous. A lot yeah. of padding going on. Yeah, it, it does. You know, they have them. They have the skates for playing hockey. I mean, it's like it, it to me. It looks like it should be. I, I don't even know if they still do it. I'm sure you guys all remember when there would be like a popular movie and they would do like He Man on Ice. Like to me, it's it looks like they were trying to do a commercial for Batman on Ice with the fucking Ice Capades dancers. So uh, that movie sucks. And yeah, number eight, fucking horrible. Batman Returns. Um, the movie is filled filled with tons of puns and bad jokes i mean the two that i that i distinctly remember was penguin is making a speech and he's like i was i was the firstborn i was number one son but my parents treated me like i was number two i'm like seriously and i and everybody shits on or what used to shit on batman 66 for for the campiness but this movie is far campier than than anything Batman 66 did because Batman 66 at least is still funny there's like a hundred jokes in Batman Returns none of them land um I did thought I thought Michelle Pfeiffer looked pretty hot I love the bat suit I think the fucking Michael Keaton bat suit looked phenomenal because it looked they got away away with the fake muscles it looked like armor I love that the ears are on the side not on the back on the side and they're long um Hardly any action in fucking Batman Returns. That's why Craig's right. It's it feels like it's five hours. It's just talk, 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 talk. You know they have Penguin Commandos. Who thought little penguins with machine guns and rockets? That was a fucking good idea. And there's hardly any Batman. And let's not forget Batman fucking outright murders people in Batman Returns. He blows up one dude with the fire from the exhaust on the Batmobile. And there's another guy, he fucking hands him a hand grenade and blows him up. Blows him so up. Batman just, just fucking murders him. So again, Tim Burton, producer Michael U- Uslan, you guys you guys didn't know what the fuck you were doing then with Batman. So yeah, I think it sucks. Uh, and that's my, uh, my number eight. All right. All right, my number 10 is uh, Batman and Robin. Oh, here I got. Batman's here with me today. Everybody say hello. Um, yeah, I mean, this movie for me, way too silly and campy. And I can't believe we're even saying that, knowing, you know, knowing how campy and silly the 66 film is. But that at least is campy and fun and intelligent and not an insult to our intelligence. I think there's a lot that goes 100%, on. 100%, Pete. Right? Yeah. I mean, here it's just... On uh, the nose. You know, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger but he's not really given a lot to work with here. And after, after like halfway through the movie, I'm like enough with these one-liners already. It's like, I love you, Arnold, but, and I know it wasn't his fault. Uh, I don't like Chris O'Donnell as Robin at all. Alicia he's like, he's like a 30 year old Robin, right? He's too old. Uh, and he just doesn't, Robin's supposed to be a kid, but you know, like a teenager. Alicia Silver, Silverstone is a wooden, horrible Batgirl. She looks, the costume looks terrible. Uh, for me, George Clooney, uh, he kind of has the suaveness and somewhat of a, the cool factor to be Bruce Wayne, but he doesn't really look the part, and I think he's terrible in the costume. Uh, and uh, at over two hours, it's way too long. So this, I, I don't really get a lot of enjoyment out of this film at all. And I agree that just 
it looks like a, a Broadway play at times. It, it looks fake. It looks like it's on a sound stage. The skating thing is ridiculous. Even if you watch it, like I was, I, I have these on Blu-ray and I was watching these for the first time on Blu-ray recently. And man, some of the scenes where everybody's like flying through the air and jumping and all that kind of stuff, so you can see how fake it looks. I mean, you can yeah. see them moving at like weird angles, like like they're being carried by ropes. It's just, it's like just the, flying, the flying monkeys from uh, Wizard of Oz. Exactly, Oz. Craig. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just not good at all. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's my number 10. Number nine, I'm going to go with Batman Forever, which is uh, right here. And that is uh, starring Val Kilmer, who... I don't think he's a good Batman either. I don't. I don't think he. He also is very wooden as Bruce Wayne. He doesn't have a lot of of charisma at all. Uh, I don't like him as Batman. He's just to me. He's just plays it really, really straight. Uh, you know, Nicole Kidman looks totally hot in the film, but her character, who cares? Uh, I think Tommy Lee Jones is completely miscast as Two Face because last I checked, Two Face is not the guy who laughs all the time. And Tommy Lee Jones oh. is laughing like a hyena throughout this entire film. What is that all about? Two-Face, the Harvey Dent character, is very cold and calculating and evil, not running around laughing and shouting like the Joker. That's basically, it's it, to me, it felt like he was playing the Joker. Uh, I actually do not mind Jim Carrey in this film at all. Because I think, and I think Rich mentioned it, I think he is basically paying tribute to Frank Gorshin's Riddler, who I always really liked. And, but you know, Jim Carrey's just playing Jim Carrey because at that point in time, every film that Jim Carrey was in, he played like the same role. I thought he was okay. I thought he was entertaining. Uh, but again, the movie's too long. Um, and it's just really, really silly, just like uh, Batman and Robin. So that's my number, number nine. My number eight, you know, my number eight and seven, I had a hard time kind of deciding which one's going to get uh, get the slot here. I ultimately decided to go with Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, I, I do like a good amount of stuff from this film. I, I personally really like Ben Affleck as Batman and Bruce Wayne. Uh, because I think for me, he, he is a terrific Bruce Wayne because he plays up the detective part of the Bruce Wayne character, which not a lot of these films really do. And I think he does a good job at that. But, you know, they make a huge deal. I remember the, the ads leading up to this about the big battle, the big fight. It kind of sucks. It's really disappointing. And to me, the best part of this film is the introduction of Wonder Woman. She totally looks badass and they make a big deal about her arrival into the film. So other than that, I think this movie was like a lot to do about nothing in the end. It's, it's entertaining, uh, but man, the writing is not tight. And, you know, you get done watching this and you're thinking, all right, that was OK. But man, I would have went totally different directions with this film. And I think we've, we've all talked about it over and over and over again. This as well as Justice League, how we would have done these films differently. And you got to wonder, like, who's writing this stuff, right? But uh, overall, and I don't, I don't mind Henry Cavill as Superman. I always thought he was pretty good. I like both of these actors in the role. I just think that this movie could have been so much better than it was. And to, to market it as Batman versus Superman would really, that was like, what, five minutes out of the whole film? Eh, kind of a disappointment. So that's my number eight. Back to Craig. All right, my number seven is uh, is also is Dark Knight Rises, and I saw this. It's I saw this in the movies. Uh, one of one of the handful of Batman movies that I saw theatrically, and uh, as I've mentioned on prior on uh, other episodes, I'm a subtitles guy when I watch uh, movies uh, at home, uh, even if it's something I've seen before. I kind of put I put the English subtitles on, and I distinctly remember sitting in the theater with my 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 friend joe i don't know how many times whenever bane would talk i kept going what the fuck did he say yeah, it's, i don't know how many times with, with the mask that serves no purpose that was right. never explained. I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times. Oh, yeah. And that that took so much uh, enjoyment out of the movie because it was like what, what did he say you know what it's like you know and so i i didn't like that um as as you guys have mentioned just the the breaking of the back and putting him back together and he it's like the the whole uh, almost reminds you of austin powers the uh elaborate scheme and it's like you could just shoot him right here it would be fun and you know and and he you know it's like you know i'm going to put you in this jail that 
there or this prison that oh, nobody that can escape thing. nobody can escape from but yet it yeah. seems like he escaped it with relative ease and, and, he, had no and he had cable yeah well, and, I was gonna no say. and he had cable you know in there. right they, they have tvs right but how do they get food right there's there's no guards yeah. well, I, I mean the whole fucking thing is so, so yeah, ludicrous and then i remember when he he, he, he climbs out and and I I do remember saying this to my to my friend at the movie. It's like he got out. And it's like well there he's escaping. I said he doesn't know where the fuck he is. I mean he could be in like you know Turkey, Afghanistan, Chile, you know. And it's like he's got no money on him, you know. I mean where how's he gonna how's he gonna find his way back to America? You know it was it was that was that was ridiculous. The whole uh, again some of the thing with the keeping the city hostage that, you know, that Chris had mentioned before, there are some cool uh, action scenes in it, you know, blowing up the bridges. I like that they brought Scarecrow back, you know, from Batman Begins, you know, in a little bit. But again, some of that stuff was just really ridiculous. I sentence you to exile, go walk out onto the ice. And it's like, why don't you just, you could just shoot him, you know, I mean, it, or, or something. And as, as Chris mentioned, uh, and it, it refreshed my memory upon rewatching this, I didn't remember if Bane was, uh, imprisoned or you know how he was defeated and then it's like you know Catwoman just shows up and shoots him I mean it was it just reminded me of like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark it's like you know you can just you know just shoot him and you know you don't have to worry about fighting him you know it's like you could have done that you know two hours ago and saved me a lot of time it it just wasn't it wasn't good uh, it just wasn't wasn't all that entertaining I remember leaving the theater going God damn it, I'm tired. And you know, and what what and and like Chris said, he he retired to, to bang Catwoman. That's you know? bullshit. And he faked his death and Alfred was totally cool with it. You know, I mean it was, you know, so I was just like, nah, I don't Well, Alfred was totally uh what's what was Ro Adrian from Rocky. You can't you can't win. You can't yeah. win, Master Bruce. You can't uh, do this. Yeah, it was it, it just it it uh was not was not good, uh, as as you would say. Uh my Number six, I'm going with Batman from 1989, the uh, the first uh, the Michael Keaton movie, and I, at the time, I mean, this was a, this was a huge hit. It was a big deal, and uh, also, you know, pre-internet. I'm sure you guys all remember seeing all these news stories or articles. Oh my God, how could you, Michael Keaton is Mr. Mom as Batman? Oh, not, oh my God. And now how many years later, people are like, you know, Michael Keaton is the best Batman uh, you know, that I've seen out of all these. And, you know, he, I, he, he, he came back for three more Batman appearances. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, you know, for, and for the time, it's pretty entertaining considering the, the only thing you really had to compare it to was the sixties Batman. So they kind of went out of their way to, uh, make it much more, much more darker and the complete polar opposite of uh, Adam West Batman uh, to, to the point where, you know, they wouldn't let him do, even have a cameo in, in the movie at all because they just, uh, Tim Burton wanted no association with him at all. Jack Nicholson is okay as the Joker. I, I think he's a little old, you know, to, to play him, but he hams it up you know, at, at parts. And again, keeping with what you knew of the Joker, I mean, people like me just comparing it to Cesar Romero, you know, it was, you know, it, it was, he was fine. With, I think with he that. was younger Can, than Caesar. Yeah. I mean, but what just, you know, I mean, he was in his 50, he was at least over 50 when, when he did it. And, and that's a hard, a hard Nicholson 50, you know, not, not like this, not like this. <laughs> not, yeah. Not like yeah, that's not, not a Kaminsky 50. That's no. No, no, no. But uh, but yeah, uh, Kim Basinger looks great in in, in the movie as uh, Vicky Vale, and uh, you know, again the the Batmobile comparing it to the '60s Batmobile. I, I mean, I remember at the time, it's like, well, it looks pretty cool. I worked at a toy store uh, in from uh, in 1989 and 1990, and then again uh, from '94 to '97. So I remember all the to these toys when they came out. Uh, for for the first uh, four uh, Batman movies, and uh, uh, these were they were big sellers. Every everybody want, loved the Batmobile and everything. Now looking back on it, I don't care for it as much. But back then, I thought it was that it was uh, that it was pretty good. The action, the action in the movie, I think it it flows pretty well, and uh, it it's 
he's it's my favorite of the four of older uh you know 89 through 97 movies uh fun fact when this this movie came out in the summer of 89 my uh, my senior year of high school was 89 into 90 and i i may have mentioned this to, to you guys before but my, my high school showed this movie at an assembly in our auditorium and uh, nobody could leave the auditorium because it was at this time that they brought in drug sniffing dogs to go around the halls to sniff the to sniff the lockers of the kids to see if there was anything wow. that they could find in there. So even if you had to go to the bathroom or something, nobody could walk out for two hours while the while the cops were outside. It was like a the the worst kept secret because everybody knew what was what was going on. But it was a big deal to see a, the, a brand new theatrical movie like this in high school because there were a lot of kids who you know didn't didn't get a chance to go see the movie. So that was at least nice that the that the school did that while the uh while the dogs were, <laughs> were out there. But um uh, but yeah you guys, you guys know how much it made? Three hundred or two something. In, in over 80s. 400, yeah. over 400 million. Yeah, for 89, that's damn good. Yeah. Huge, yeah. yeah. But again, I remember when this came out in the summer of 89, there were three big movies. This, um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Lethal Weapon 2. And uh, this one, uh, to be honest, was the least, my least favorite of those three big mm -hmm. films of 1989. I'll take Indiana Jones and Lethal Weapon 2 over, over Batman and uh, over that Batman movie. But uh, yeah, that's my number six. My number five, I uh, agree with much of what you guys said about uh, Batman versus Superman. Uh, the version that I, I watched recently was the Ultimate Edition, which is about three hours long. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I mean, it. it the, there were things that I did like about it. I liked the action. I liked the, the, the beginning where it's where you really didn't have to watch, and which I still haven't. I've never seen Man of Steel. And you really didn't have to uh, the way that they presented the beginning of Batman versus Superman, because it's kind of like the, the climactic fight in that movie is kind of yeah, going give the, give a little, the little recap. recap yeah. yeah. And and uh, it's it remind I, it's supposed to remind you of like 9-11 with you know, buildings falling down and all the all the smoke and everything. So I did. I, I like the action. I agree. I like Ben Affleck in this role. And uh I, you know, they're showing him, you know, he was easily the the biggest uh, Batman for this. I mean, they show him working out and uh, doing the the Rocky workout and everything to get to pump himself up, which, you know, which, which is, uh, which is good to see. And uh, I didn't like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I thought he was, he was too young and, and just kind of annoying. I didn't, I, I didn't like that. I did like the introduction of Wonder Woman. That was cool. But that the fight between Batman and Superman, the movie is called Batman versus Superman. And, you know, the fight comes up and yeah, I know it's a comic book movie, but I just could not while watching this. I just thought to myself, I cannot see Batman go. Sorry, Jane. You know, sorry, Batman. I could not see Batman going toe to toe with Superman and winning. You know, and I just, you know, because I thought, well, wouldn't anybody just make like a kryptonite bullet and just shoot him, you know, if, if it was that relatively, you know, easy. And, uh, you know, and I didn't like the, uh, oh, you smell that? That's, that's fear. You know, I didn't, I, I thought that was stupid, you know, you know, during that. And I just, I, I didn't like the whole, the whole fight scene. And as Batman alluded to that Martha, I didn't remember how that scene happened because i i just i i saw this movie before not the ultimate edition but i didn't remember it's how does how did this resolve itself and i was like wait the coincidence the coincidence that both their mothers have the same name that's how it stopped uh, mm -hmm. i i was like ah oh god you know my my brain like just you know went right through the wall i i, I that just and then, hey, let's just throw in Doomsday at the end of the movie just to blow more shit up. I, I, it was just ridiculous. And and how Doomsday is di dispatched, uh, not easily, but it's like you took all this time, you, you introduced like a what could be a a pretty cool comeback uh, villain, and then you kill him uh, right away. Like uh, you guys had mentioned before with the, the King Kong movies, you got all these cool monsters, and then oh, let's just blow up the whole island. Well, that's they blew up uh, Doomsday at the end of the movie, so that just kind of kind of sucked ass so i yeah so my yeah my number five is uh is batman versus superman 
All right, Rich. All right, that's my that's my seven. And before I go on to my comments, wasn't Batman vs Superman a comic book too? No, it was, no. I mean, they they fought plenty of times before. Yeah, um, but it wasn't took, official. They took a bulk book? of the fight scene from the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns Return. comic yeah. book. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, and the, and the I believe the final the fight against Doomsday. That's from the death of Superman. Death of Superman. Superman. Yeah. Right. That's death of Superman. Right. So they they did pull from the comics, but it's not one right. of these things like oh it was a it was a novel first or a, a mini oh, you know right. a, a limited series and then they turned it into a movie. No. So they, they tried to use that to connect to the Man of Steel and then connect it to the future, which would have been the Justice League. Yeah. So they tried like a three. They tried to combine three stories together. Yeah. They, they wanted to get somewhere really quick, which was get to the Justice League. Exactly. Was and it was well, a, and reality it was a is they, they wanted to they catch, wanted up, to with catch Marvel up with Marvel really quick. Right, right. And they so did that the was, way, yeah. look at look at Justice League. It's a it's a mess unless you watch yeah. the, the Zack Snyder Cup, which Worst is better way ever, you know, with, with uh just the, didn't work. No. Yeah. Um and then like I said, Justice League, which was supposed to be next, and then that was a mess, and then we'll follow that up properly. Right. So Big problem with between Man of Steel and then this, right? And then the Justice League. So same comments you guys said about it with the story and everything. You know, they tried to connect it to the Superman story. Um, Batman sees, you know, him as a threat because he's Superman, you know, he's an alien. I thought the cinematography is way too CGI sometimes in that movie, right? Look very artificial, like a video game. Uh, the best moment for me, I, I mean, I like the fight with Doomsday too. That was kind of cool, but he looks a little too CGI as well. Doesn't look always oh, yeah. natural and, orga and organic. But the best shot is, of course, when the three of them are lined up and they're ready to fight. You know, they all come together and they do it kind of like with the new Spider-Man movie, right? When the three of them swing down and they're all together, that's like my favorite shot of the movie. You know, that's very cool. Um, ben Affleck's fine as Batman. I like him. Like you guys say, he's a little too old. Um, Wonder Woman's great. She's beautiful and she's powerful like she's supposed to be. And No, Linda Carter. <laughs> All right. But what did Carter, you guys think of the bat? What did you guys think of the bat? Uh, the Ben Affleck Batman uh, with, with the little bitty. The Cal, little, bitty a little too short. I like the costume, but didn't like the ears. Did yeah, not like the ears. A little too short. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, you guys, you guys said he's too old too at this point. Why are we at this point so far down the line with well, such an older I, Batman? I think the idea uh, was to have an older Batman because he was the guy that obviously in the next movie has to recruit everybody to form the Justice League. Right. If he was a fucking wet behind the ears 21 year old, you wouldn't bother. It wouldn't have worked. But 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 when you see him in the movies, when you see him in the movies though, this one in Justice League, it's like he's already tired already. He's like, I'm already done. Like he's ready to, you know. He's ready to retire and it's ready for uh, Batman Beyond next. You know what I mean? It's like I, I guess but seems, that, that's why he's an older to, Batman to lead to lead the Justice League because Superman is dead. But compared to the other Justice League members, they seem more younger and spirited than he is. You know? Well, they were younger. They were younger too. Yeah. Even even uh, Aquaman too. So all right. Um, what else did I want to put down here? Yeah. So that's on my number seven. And like I said, I wrote down the biggest problem with DC is that you got too many Easter eggs and cameos and they don't follow it up with the next movie. And that's what happened with this movie too. Because this is this is the Rich one... does not like shit that, that is left open-ended. No. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it really bugs him. Now, this is the one, this is, when Lex Luthor gets broken out by Deathstroke, right? Uh, uh, no. No. That's, that's, just, just, that's just as... League. That's yeah. Justice League, Rich. Yeah. Okay. So what happens the 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's there's there's the two different Justice Leagues, Rich. Yeah. The end of this one is when it's broken out. No. The no, end of this head one shaved is and he goes to jail. Lex Luthor is in jail and Batman visits him right. and tells him he's you know he's gonna watch him and he, he yeah. almost brands him. But right. he's like, well, the didn't the, Dinner bell's right. already been rung, meaning he's already contacted. Uh, what's his name? Not not Dark That's Side. True. Dark Side's uh, not Caliban. Uh, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Steppenwolf. Yeah. Steppenwolf. Yeah. But he's the one. Deathstroke's the one that 
breaks them out at the end of this, no, correct? No, no, Rich, that's the that's wrong no, move. There's no breakout. There's yeah. no breakout. There's no death stroke. You're oh, on the wrong move. And that's it. That's, you know, that's Justice League. You're you're talking that man. And then, and, then, and then the Zack Snyder version is when he gets visited by Martian Manhunter. Yes, which is a better, which is a better ending. There we Correct. go. Correct. That, yeah, that gives me that we're not ranking. But, but again, Rich Catino, that yes. we're not we're not discussing that Justice League. It's but true. that Justice League is open ended, so you should really be bothered by that. I'm bothered by <laughs> that man old. is old and he's confused. So confused. <laughs> I am. I am. I am aggravated with the whole DCU. I'm just. Done, I'm done with it. We Chris, should be can the I, Chris, team. Can I ask we you about the Morbius guys. movie now? <laughs> we should be the team that's writing for them. We should be the team of five. Of yeah, us. listen, we'll it couldn't be any worse. We'll have continuity, consistency, the whole deal. Yeah, that's true. Right. So that's seven. Six is. <laughs> that wasn't that's all three, three of yours? <laughs> What's that? I thought that was all three of yours. One. Oh. I told you this was going to be a three-hour episode. <laughs> you guys thought I was fucking around. Batman is running into my, running I, went into my, my I went into my... You thought Ben Affleck was old. Holy shit, next. wait till this episode ends. All right. <laughs> Real quick, six is Batman Returns, and then five is... I got to go to my notes here. It's crazy. All right, five is the Batman, the one that just came out from 2022. <laughs> So I'll talk about that a little bit. I like the way it starts at the beginning, sort of. This is year two, consider, correct? Yeah. Story I believe, yeah. Okay. So, see, Chris, I'm on track with this one. You got on no the nose, like always, Rich, on the nose. No tangents. All right. So, yes, it starts at the beginning with the year two thing. I like the way it's more modern. It's a little more mature. It's a little more current, right? Um, it's a good beginning. I like the cinematography and the production. It's dark like Gotham should be. Very monochromatic with the color scheme. You know, guys notice that when you're watching a movie. No bright colors. Everything is very grays and blacks and things like that. Um, Robert Pattinson, at first, I was very hesitant about him, but he's fine. But it's that whole, I, I don't like the way he's just dark and it's depressing throughout the whole movie. His character is just one dimensional. So while I like the movie, and direction and the way it looks in the production his character i think was just too dark throughout an entire film i know it's the beginning he's depressed and upset and things like that you even have the nirvana song in there you know to, to go with the, the mood of the movie but i don't know about you guys we'll see when you talk about it i, don't, I didn't want to see that throughout the whole movie because i didn't think batman should be portrayed like that throughout the whole film you know even though maybe this is the frame of mind he's in right now but i think there should have been a little bit more of another side to batman like we got with the tim Byrne movies you know it was still dark he was still angry and things like that but you also got to see the other side of batman too and we're not seeing that in this movie so yeah, it was definitely a different bruce wayne for sure it is yeah. it is I was gonna say, so, they, they played nirvana a bunch and the look of batman of bruce wayne in that in that movie was based yeah. on kurt cobain yeah. Oh. So yeah, I hate Nirvana, so I didn't like that part <laughs> either. <laughs> no grunge for me. <laughs> uh let's see. Uh Zoe Kravitz was great as Catwoman. And uh what's the actor's name that played Riddler? Oh yeah. Paul Dano. Paul Dano. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he was very good too as the Riddler. I like the way the mask was kind of like makeshift and taped up, you know. This is the beginning, you know, of these villains. So I could see why their design is like that. You know, it's very primitive and simplistic, you know, so that worked. And, and Penguin was great. You know, he has those Penguin qualities. You can kind of see it in the nose a little bit, but it's not as exaggerated as the other Penguin for Batman Returns. He kind of waddled you know? a little bit. Yeah, he got a little bit of the waddle going on, you know. So I thought that was good. Um, like I said, the music, it's just too depressing throughout the whole film. I didn't expect it to be upbeat either, but. It just, it brought down the whole film for me. Even though, you know, it's at my five, and I like the way its direction is, I think it just needed a little more contrast parts, you know? Just a little bit. Uh, yeah, so my five. So I think it's a good start. I'm looking forward to what they do next. I just hope they keep with the consistency and don't you know go to another direction or something like that? And we'll you know, see, I'm I don't even, I don't even think they know. 
So we'll see. With the next movie, though, I hope. But it looks like they're going to bring in the Joker based off of what we saw. I want to see the other villains. I think I've talked to you about this with you guys. Who I want to see next. Somebody like Clayface or Man Bat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or Man Bat or somebody like that. You know, give us somebody different that we haven't seen. You know, design them darker, darker color schemes. You know what I mean? Make them really scary and ferocious and. Like Solomon, Grun- Solomon Grundy would be probably be pretty cool. To Solomon see. Grundy, even a proper but killer croc. All of these are awesome. two. All of these are two comic book fantasy. They, uh, what's his name? Matt Reeves is going more realistic than Christopher Nolan. So we're never going to so see. Gonna go the same we're never going to see Man Bat or Clayface or Condiment King or Solomon Grundy. So instead, it, you'll no, see cal- Calendar Man yeah. or uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely. So we're gonna get, so we're gonna get the same villains again. We're gonna get Riddler. We're Probably. gonna get Joker. We're gonna get yeah, Two Face. We're gonna get all the same guys again. Same shit. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna be half in and half out at that point if they do that. Yeah. I'm bored of seeing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, they they just keep playing the same. So, all right. Yeah. 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 All, all right. right. So that's my five. Back to Batman. All right, Batman's gonna be fast because he's getting past his bedtime. Like I said, I'm not the dark knight. I like to run around during the day in Metropolis, sometimes with the bomb over my... All right, number seven, the Batman. Just right when you thought that it didn't get any more darker for Batman, this thing came out. Everyone's depressed. Everybody's whispering. Everybody's moving in slow motion all the time. They could have shaved off an hour in this movie if everyone just picked up the pace. 100%. Yep, that too. I forgot about that. Now, I, forgot, I forgot about all the whispering. You know, when I bought that on 4K and I watched it at home, Constantly. it was like, I kept whispering. having to raise the volume. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk. I'm like, what? I don't remember what having they say? Yeah. It's crazy. People say it's well done, but here is the bottom line. I want to show you a picture of this young citizen in Gotham City, a young Jamie Laszlo dressed up as his favorite superhero, Batman, in first grade. Now, this young man has since grown into a 52-year-old man who, believe it or not, still likes to dress up as Batman. (laughs) (laughs) But this little boy still lives inside of that 52-year-old Jamie Laszlo. And imagine bringing this little boy to this movie. This little boy is going to be bored. And so was the man since this little boy is still inside of him. We want Batman movies, but what we keep getting is Dark Knight movies. I want a Batman movie again. Mm -hmm. So Batman does have a little bat spray. (laughs) These movies aren't fun anymore, repellent. Bat spray, put it on there, a little bit more fun. People aren't whispering. People are smiling a little bit more. More fun, more upbeat. Number six. Now number six for the real one. Batman, the movie. Batman or Batman 66, depends on how you want to put it. Between you and me, guys, this is the best one. But then why is it at number six? What the <laughs> five? Yeah, that doesn't because, because Egghead as Chief O'Hara captive, and he's forcing me to put it lower. (laughs) Something about this tarnishing his acting career of being a serious horror actor, I don't know what all that means, but I'm putting it at number six, save the life of Chief O'Hara. But I dare you to watch this and not have fun. Yes, it's ridiculous. Yes, it's campy, but it's fun as all heck. People like to talk about the shark scene. I can assure you that the shark was real and I was in fear for my life. But for you people, I like the scene and think it's too fake looking. I have shark repellent. Repellent. That's, That's in the movie. That was in the movie too. On. Yep. But the, on the, the nose, Rich. Stayed. On the nose. He had the whale repellent stayed. too in, in, in that. He had, a, he, had a, he had a whole selection. To Bar- Barracuda. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number five. A little higher than some of you. Batman returns. Oof. Shell Pfeiffer giving Julie Newmar a run for her money. Chris gave it the oof. Yeah. <laughs> I think Danny DeVito does an all right job to a certain extent. 
I see its faults, but I've seen it so many times, this movie, that it's kind of like it. I have the illusion that maybe it's a bigger classic than what it is. I know the lines by heart. So I see the faults. I see your points, but I'm still putting it at number five. There is a scene in this movie that once you notice, you can't unsee. There is a scene where Batman, I don't know why he would do this, but takes off his mask. Good, excellent point. In front of the bad guy. In front of the bad guy. But the, they show him with the mask, with the black eyeliner under the yes. mask, and he's about to do it. Then it goes back to the facial expression of the person. Then back to him, there is no eyeliner. It magically disappeared. Yep. <laughs> he takes off the mask, no eyeliner, and it shows Bruce Wayne. This Batman would never wear eyeliner. I might have wings, but I ain't no fairy. So that scene gives me problems now. And I get the scene, the scenes with the, as Allo said, with the little penguins with the little hats on, <laughs> being brain controlled with the missiles on their backs. People have problems with the, that scene. I have problems with that scene. So. I have penguins. Anti-penguin commando repellent. spray. Put it on there. The hats are gone. The penguins are still there, but at least the hats are gone. I, I like that in both Michael five. Keaton movies. Every time he meets a woman, he, he he immediately has to tell them that he's Batman. So it's like every time. Every That's time true, he, too. You know, it, he'd like, have uh, so many exes walking around knowing yeah, he was fucking Batman. Like how many, how, all these chicks happen to know that he's Batman yeah. know, around town. You know. Very trustworthy. Yeah. Number five is Batman Returns. I like this movie better than you guys. Um, or no, perfect. Batman. Where am I? <laughs> what number oh, am I? I ask myself Batman that question all the time. Is that was five. five. That was five. That's, that's five. Yeah. All right. right. <clears throat> that's your. So five. I did five. So I'm. Oh, no, that's your five. I'm yeah. done. All right. Back to Chris. All right. Uh, yeah, Rich. Rich not liked my Batman towel when I'm when I'm in the tub. I use my 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 Batman bubble bath when I'm driving the car. I use my Batman air freshener. I have extras. This one I keep sealed for collectible reasons. Uh, this is my uh, 1966 uh, Batman lunchbox. That's awesome. Oh, I I don't have the thermos. Oh, uh, I wish I, wish nice. I did. Uh, How much does the thermos go for by itself? You know, gosh, Jamie, I don't know. I never looked for one. Um, Probably cheaper know. than That's... you think. Okay, I'll have, to, I'll have to look for one one of these days. Uh, young, the uh, Batman showed us the picture of young Jamie Laszlo in a 1970s uh, Batman Ben Cooper costume. Uh, and I have um, three of those. This is the solid box, which was a like a heavier duty costume, and then the, I wore uh, I wore one of these two in the seventies. I thought the heavy duty costumes were the best things ever. And then this is the brand new for this Halloween, the brand oh, wow. new uh, brand new Batman retro. Cooper, That's awesome, uh, Batman costume. And of course, we we sh I don't think we mentioned yet. But uh, a few days ago was uh, International Batman Day. That's right. Oh, so this uh, the timing on this is really good. But um, all right, number seven, uh, Batman Forever. Uh, you you guys already mentioned it all. Um, but Tim Burton was fired from the Batman franchise after Batman Returns. So Joel Schumacher was told do everything as different from Tim Burton as you could. Uh, so he made. Batman Forever, which did well. Uh, I kind of liked Val Kilmer as as Bruce Wayne. I thought he was all right as Batman. Uh, there was a lot more Batman in Batman Forever than in the other one. Um, and they they made a fucking point in Batman Forever. And I, that to me, it was a total dig on, on Tim Burton, on the Tim Burton movies. When he's like, when Robin wants to kill... Um, whatever the whatever villain it was that killed his family and he's like no we don't kill if we were to do that we would be as bad as the villains and blah 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 they they made a point of it several times which i thought was cool and to me was definitely a dig on um on, on tim burton because obviously t the tim burton batman was a fucking murderer uh that's my number seven uh number six batman versus superman 
Craig mentioned it last week, and I echo his statements. All of these Batman movies are way too fucking long. Batman versus Superman, like as Pete mentioned, and Jamie, aka Batman, way too fucking long. The theatrical cuts two hours and 40 minutes. The extended cut is over three hours. Are you fucking kidding me? That would be like if Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla was three hours and two minutes. You don't fucking need it. There's all it. these all these subplots, all these extra characters. The, the, the point of them fighting is fucking ridiculous. Batman doesn't like Superman because all these people got killed. Superman doesn't like Batman's tactics, yet we see in this movie they are both fucking murderers. Batman must kill like 30 people in this movie. And Batman, uh, I'm sorry, Superman, we saw him kill General Zod at the end of Man of Steel. And when his girlfriend has a fucking gun in her head, Superman kills that fucking terrorist by knocking him through four concrete walls. So they're both fucking murderers. So the whole point of them fighting is stupid. Um, the whole Martha thing is completely ridiculous because the thing that to me makes no goddamn sense, Batman is the world's greatest detective. If he had a, a bone to pick with Superman, he would have studied Superman, he would have found out everything he could off of Superman, and without a doubt, he would have figured out that Clark Kent was Superman. And then while he's studying Clark Kent, he would have seen, oh, Ma and Pa Kent, uh, Ma Kent's name was Martha. Oh, yeah, my mom's name was Martha, too. <laughs> I, I mean, he would have fucking seen that. So the, the whole thing is just and stupid. why does it matter that their na names are wow. the same? There should have been another reason why they got along. Yeah, I mean, it was it's, it's, it's so dumb. I, I do remember seeing an interview with Zack Snyder before it was released, and he was like, ah, oh, you know, I came up with something that's like, known but nobody thought to connect it and i'm like when i finally saw the movie I'm like that's it <laughs> they both had like, like martha was a fucking popular name in the 30s big deal they both just Mar like seriously like that's your but yeah anyway and the whole point of killing superman completely fucking ridiculous because nobody knew he everybody knew he was gonna gonna die i mean you said in the title you were gonna do the justice league so that was dumb uh, and uh, number five for me, the Batman. Three hours? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, listen. We filmed you know, some of our episodes in three hours straight. It's true. Boom. We're Bam. done. This, this episode dinner. might be over in less than three hours. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, too fucking long. Too long. Too many subplots. Good cast. Robert Pattinson, I thought he was a good Batman, but I thought he was a shitty Bruce Wayne. I hate the Kurt Cobain Nirvana thing. Hated the fucking bat suit. It looked like it was hodgepodge of bullshit that he put together at the fucking, at the Army Navy or the fucking uh, Goodwill store. I hated the fucking cowl. It looked like they painted it on his skull. Um, and I hated the fact that the, the movie should have ended when the Riddler gets caught, or really when the Riddler gives himself up, that was two hours and 15, the two hour and 15 minute mark. There is no fucking reason that movie should have dragged on to its death for another 45 minutes. They again brought in the No Man's Land storyline from the comics, which they did in Dark Knight Rises, and they have to cut off Gotham City from the rest of the world. It was, it was fucking stupid. I just, I just fucking hate it. I, I, I totally wanted to leave. Plus, I had to piss really bad. Uh, I was like, for fuck's sake, man. You know, you, you get to the theater 30 minutes before it starts, 30 minutes of trailers, and then a three-hour fucking Batman movie? I mean, fuck, man. Uh, listen, I'm the king of watching movies for 24 hours, but fuck, man. Batman, it, it didn't need to be that long and boring. So that's my that's my number five. All righty. Uh, my number seven, right? Seven. Uh, I'm going to go with Batman Returns from 92. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good looking Batman film. It's just it's weird how you know, and you guys have all touched upon it. How you the Tim Burton films are very gothic looking, and then you get the Schumacher films, which are all bright and shiny, and it's just it's, it, it, there's all these continuity issues like from all over the place. Um, you know, it's got its moments, but Penguin is just way too creepy and and looking like this weird ass monster in this film which you know and less of like an underlord under you know 
he's a crime lord is what the penguin is i think you know in in the uh in the most recent film i think they could they did do a good job of bringing him back to that um but i you know this i've seen this movie so many times there's there's something about the danny devito depiction that's kind of endearing it's like a nostalgia thing but uh and i always like mm-hmm. the the end scene where he's killed and, and you got the, the penguins kind of drag him off into the water and now he goes floating away obviously he looks as fake as anything um but the, the whole army of penguins thing is so far-fetched and ridiculous i love penguins like anybody else but man it's ridiculous uh i don't really like the whole supernatural creation of Catwoman either i think that's ridiculous i think michelle pfeiffer does a pretty Get good job in the role, but i didn't because like that at fell? all what's that how did she get her powers because she fell yeah that's it she fell in what the the cats she, she, got, bit cats. By the other, she got bit by the yeah. other cats yeah that's how yeah she got it. it's just it's just kind of strange crazy um and batman is hardly in this movie barely he's, uh-huh. he's like a bit player in his own movie and i just i also don't agree how like they're constantly in all these films they're killing off the the main villains yeah. Why you got to keep killing them off? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't. Well, know. You wouldn't have a rogues gallery if they're all dead, <laughs> right? So it, exactly. the, it's p- pretty pointless. Yeah, because you know the main. If you've been following Batman in the comics or whatever for all these years, there's this place called Arkham Asylum. Hello, that's what they do. They take the villains, they put them in there. Eventually, they either break out or they're rehabilitated, and then they go back to doing the same thing they've always done before. Why can't they do this in the films? Why do they always have to kill them off? I don't know. So anyway, that's my number seven. My number six is, uh, what is my number six? My number six is The Batman. Uh, I love the darkness of this film. I like dark Batman films. That's just me. I, I don't mind the whole Dark Knight thing. That's, uh, that's what I like about Batman. Uh, I think Pattinson, I think he's an okay Batman. I don't like him as Bruce Wayne at all. Exactly what Chris was saying. I, I'm not interested in Batman being Kurt Cobain. Don't care about that. Uh, I get it. They're trying to, it's year two and he's a young Bruce Wayne, but he's, he's not Bruce Wayne today at all. There's nothing about his portrayal that screams Bruce Wayne. Um, Riddler is fantastic in this again, not really the traditional Riddler, but I think he does a great job. He's maniacal. He's devious. It's what he needs to be. Uh, I, you know, do they need to put Colin Farrell in this role of the penguin and put all this makeup on. So he's unrecognizable or could they could have got, just got someone else. I don't know, but he's okay for what he is. He's a bit role in this particular film. Uh, Catwoman is well done. I think uh, interesting take on James Gordon. I thought um, films too long. I agree, but I don't mind it all that much. And uh, yeah, once again, they're taking like uh, different popular historical batman stories and constantly combining them all in these movies so again you got no man's land meets like year one it's like every movie is like this collision of different stories why not just do a whole movie on one classic story for once you know which is what they do in the cartoons and that's why the cartoons generally are always much better than the films so that's my number six and my number five, what is my number five? My number five is Batman the movie or Batman 66. You know, I grew up on this. This is fun. Silly beyond belief, but that's what makes it great. Uh, Jamie already mentioned it. Oh, sorry, Batman already mentioned it. Uh, the shark scene where he's hanging from the helicopter is classic bad movie stuff. I mean, it doesn't get any worse or better than that. It's just the fight. You, uh, Pete, real quick. Did, well, I watched it again today, too. Did you notice how the shark is staying in position? Oh, of course. Someone's that? holding it. Oh, you know someone's the rope, the rope is the ladder, yeah. on top of its mouth. Yeah. It's hysterical. <laughs> It's so bad. It's so bad. And the um, fight scenes are so bad. I mean, you know, I mean, granted, the show was like that, too. But, you know, they're throwing punches. The punch is like three feet away from the person. It's so bad. But, you know, and, and I love how, like, they have all the, the stand in doubles, like, throughout the entire film. And you see they're only shooting them from the back. So you like, also oh, Rob- Robin, look, the Robin double looks pretty beefy. If you he, he totally looks beefy. How about all the yeah. scenes when they're driving the, the boat? through yep. the water and the helicopter and they do it from the side you know yeah. that's not uh burt ward burt ward no doubt and that, you guy, know that, guy, that guy was puerto rican and fucking <laughs> he was. you know it's great too everything has a label like when they're on the uh the bat ladder or something there's a yeah. thing on the sign on the bottom that says bat ladder it's awesome yeah. it's well, i like that it said bat computer it's like yeah. well you couldn't I mean, figure that out you know that is TV show, TV yeah. show was the same thing they, they must have just Batman that, needs you know, help Yep. You remember the I label maker? No, what's what? Remember the label maker? Brother, brother P Touch. 
that yes. computer, <laughs> that phone. Uh, it's so ridiculous. That, that like, thingamajig. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 so much fun that's that's what's great about this film it's a lot of fun and lee merriweather yeah yes indeedy uh so yeah i don't know it's it's my number five could be higher it's it's a load of fun and uh back to craig all right my number four i'm going with the batman uh never saw this until uh just a few a uh, couple or a few weeks ago uh, watched this on HBO Max in 4K, and I'm obviously well aware of how long the movie was. But I'm uh, while I'm watching it, I was really enjoying it. I, I was like, "Wow, this is almost like seven. You know, it was dark and rainy very the whole much time, so. very much. You know, yeah. and uh, Riddler, uh, unlike being uh, a prankster, you know, sort of in the he was a serial killer going after Gotham's elite." thought that was cool like the way that you know nothing wrong with going with a different approach as long as it's you know as long as it's you know it's kind of cool i like i like that i i I liked as you guys have mentioned before the detective aspect of this that uh batman or you know was they would get the the clues and kind of like in the old in the in batman 66 how he would you know Oh, it must be this, you know, he, but, you know, he would solve the, solve the riddles and everything. And I was very well engaged uh, with the movie. The one thing I, a couple things that I did, that I didn't like, I thought Catwoman was just totally, wor- I, honestly, I thought she was kind of worthless in this. I mean, it was like, it was just like a random girl at a club and she had what, like a ski, a ski mask on with that, that had like little ears. It's almost like they forgot to, to do that when they made her outfit. And I just, she didn't really seem to have any purpose uh, in, in the movie. I, I just, it was just kind of like, well, let's throw, throw somebody else in. And, but the biggest thing, as Chris had mentioned earlier, again, I'm in, I'm enjoying this movie, not really conscious of how much time has passed and never saw it before. So they find the Riddler, you know, and 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 they arrest him. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh my God, there's there what? There's 45 minutes left in this, I, I was, and and it was like he had bomb. He put bombs around the city. It's like, I thought he was just a serial killer. Why is now he's trying to blow up the city? I mean, it was. I was like, oh God, you know, just kill me now. I mean, that that kind of sucked me out of. I was enjoying this, and I uh, Pattinson. Liked him as you guys mentioned. Liked him as Batman. I didn't like him as Bruce Wayne. I didn't like that he was he was so mean to Alfred. Alfred was like the coolest guy, mm-hmm. you know. It seemed like That's in a good point in the, in the Batman. I mean, he was so nice to him and everything, and, and you know, and I thought he was just shitting on him the whole movie. And it was like, man, just you know, in, in every other instance. Batman and Alfred are besties, you yeah, know. That's, this, Craig, that's like, a great point. I, I, yeah, I just, forgot about that. He yeah. he, he, he almost blows proud. up in Wayne Manor. And right, Bruce Wayne is in the hospital, and as soon as Alfred wakes up, as soon as he wakes up, Bruce Wayne starts fucking yelling at him. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I didn't, I didn't like that. I was like, why, why are you being so mean to Alfred? You know, mm-hmm. Alfred's your buddy, you know, your father basically, you know. And so, but again, the parts that I did like, the detective part, you know, I, I, I did get some enjoyment out of that movie. So that's my, that's my number four. My number three. Uh, three i'm gonna i don't know if it's really controversial but i'm going with uh the dark knight as as my number three i uh, i i saw this theatrically in imax as it was intended to uh i believe this was the first movie that was filmed specifically for imax so that's why i went to to see it as such i i liked it and i enjoyed the action i i enjoyed christian bales or excuse me um heath ledger's performance as joker but i'll be honest i do not think it was oscar worthy i think it, they gave him that because uh you know sympathy because he had he had died i i mean it's it's a good performance i just i do not see it as an award-winning performance and i like that he did he did do it a little bit different again seeing it uh, comparing it to Jack Nicholson and Cesar Romero that they they went a, a different route. I I did like that, but I didn't like the Harvey Dent stuff at at the end, kind of like shoehorning him in as Two Face because they they established in the movie so much that Harvey Dent was such a good a good man and such a noble person, and I just didn't see that he could be flipped. You know, relative it seemed like relatively easily by 
one conversation from from the Joker, and it kind of you know it's like yeah, his, his girlfriend had uh, died, but I, I just I didn't see him flipping to become the complete polar opposite to being a, a murderer uh, uh, as compared to how he was as Harvey Dent. Although he looked, I liked the look with the makeup. Yeah, although I watch. Although I'm watching it and going, you know, that eye would fall out like really quickly because he couldn't blink, you know, or anything. But, you know, it, it looked but it looked cool. And um, yeah, it, it, the the action was good. Uh, all of the the fast moving sequences and uh, drive uh, all the driving sequences are really cool. Just the whole, you know, popping out uh, the, you know, the motorcycle would pop out and, you know, from the Batmobile and, uh, and everything. It was, that was cool. It, it was, that, that was really nice to see. So, so yeah, night mine number three is the dark night. Uh, my number two is Batman 66. I love this movie. This is pure nostalgia. I remember coming home from school uh, you probably kindergarten and in first grade and Batman would be in reruns mm -hmm. around two or two 30 or so. So I would, I would come home from school just in time to, to see the, the old episodes of the Adam West Batmans. And I used to love to see, it's like, Oh, will this one have cat. Uh, will this one have Batgirl in it? Because you know, the, right, the, the beginning sequence was a little different. So uh, of course, as a little kid, it was like, Ooh, well, I like Batgirl. She's, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it was, um, you know, I, I love watching the show and, you know, in Batman 66, I mean, you can get the Batcopter, the Batmobile, the Batboat and the Bat motorcycle that I don't know how Robin made it out alive, you know, uh, being in the sidecar in that, you know, but you get all those things. You get shark repellent. You get whale repellent. You get uh, uh, Batman running around with a giant, uh, you know, Atari kaboom sized bomb, you know, around the docks. It's, <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, you, as you said, you cannot watch this movie and not have a, not have a smile on your face. It is so much fun. And as Pete just earlier said, oh my God, Lee Merriweather as Catwoman is gorgeous. And, and people have to remember, Lee Merriweather was Miss America, 1955, I believe. So she's not just a, like a regular pretty, pretty actress. She is gorgeous. The scene where she is uh, in the press room Inter, you know, inter asking questions to Batman in her le leopard jacket, leopard hat, and knee-high boots on. Holy fucking shit! I mean, gorgeous. I mean, I mean, and uh, she had a cat named Hakate. You know, I mean, I mean, although as a yeah, as a villain, she's relatively worthless. I mean, she doesn't really do anything. She just basically throws the cat, you know, and and tells the other guys, sick them boys. You know, I mean, that's really all that she does. But oh my God, she is gorgeous I, and easily my the the most I my favorite uh, of of the of all the various uh, Catwomen. All, Anne Hathaway is totally hot though in her in her outfit in in uh, Dark Knight uh, Rises though I'll I'll give her that. But absolutely love Batman sixty six and uh, I I that was the only one that was not available on HBO Max uh, for me to watch. So I actually got it on pay per view. Best four dollars that I spent, you know, to to uh, to watch that. And so uh, great, just a just a really fun movie. A big happy birthday to you, Craig from Batman. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Happy Bat. Birthday. Birthday. Greg. Happy <laughs> bad day. Happy bad day. Oh, yeah. All right, Rich. Four, three, and two. All right. Four is that movie, Batman the movie. For the same, everything you said, Craig. You know, the nostalgia and everything. I remember watching a TV show when I was a kid in the 70s, throwing pills around my mom's living room, breaking things because I thought I was Batman and I was, I don't know what I was doing. I was jumping off the couch and everything. It's crazy. Throw it, put a, I remember putting a, a towel over my back and putting a, a, a not a paper, uh, like a clip, you know, to hold it. So, it's like, it, yeah, yeah, like a pin. So it wouldn't fall off. You know, it was awesome. So that's my four. Um, I love the, like I said, the tags that are on it too. I like the way everything is labeled. Uh, and the shark thing is awesome. And it, that actually begins the movie too. That starts the movie. That's like one of the first scenes when he gets attacked by the shark. So, yeah, it's great nostalgia. One of my favorites. And then, Three, I'm going with Batman Begins. I actually got, I don't know if you guys too probably have this version, the two-disc version, and then it came with the comic book. 
little, you know, reprints of the comics in that. So I like this one, especially because it's got my favorite, one of my favorite Batman villains, Scarecrow. I like that it was a good retelling, new, you know, new start. It was a darker Batman like he should be, but it was still the Bruce Wayne, you know, that we still know as well. So you get both sides of him, not like the Robert Pattinson one, like we're talking about, where it's very one dimensional. You get, you know, both sides of him. I just wish that the Scarecrow was properly designed. Another thing, like the Bane thing. Not as bad. He still had the mask, but I think it would have been a really cool, terrifying image to see him, you know, even as a silhouette, you know, in that Scarecrow costume with the scythe in his hand, like a shadow or something, you know, on a building or an image like that, or him in the shadows with, you know, partially lit in that costume or something. But I thought that was a missed opportunity out of the movie. But other than that, I, I really enjoy it for, for what it is and a retelling and a new start for another trilogy. Uh, and then my two is The Dark Knight. I love the Joker. I love that interpretation of him. I thought he was great, looked great, sounded great. Had all that personality of, what was the actor from the 66 show? Peter Romero. Yeah, I thought he had some of that quality in him. And Jack Nicholson. I thought it was a little bit of both. And that's why I really liked him. And I like the way he's crazy and maniacal and destructive and he's a killer, but he's also got so much to say throughout the movie. He's got all these, you know, his Joker philosophies that he likes to tell, you know, get inside of Batman's head, you know, that kind of stuff. I think they really did that well in this movie too. So that's why it's one of my favorites as well. So that comes in my two. All right, Batman. All right, we're moving right along. Let's keep it going. Yeah. I'm going number four, Batman Forever. I like it more than you guys. I think it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, there is a lot of camp in it, but I think just enough camp to where it doesn't go too overboard. I think Jim Carrey is fun. I think Tommy Lee Jones is fun, and it's not too often I say that sentence. My issue with it, very small issue, I don't have a lot of issues with it, is I don't like the Batmobile design, the back thin is way too big it looks ridiculous so of course i devise a big batmobile back fin repellent that spray fin gone fixed i'm fixing these movies left and right unless you like the shark in batman 66 and i ruined that movie for you <laughs> then i am going number three the dark knight i always thought it was overrated but i have warmed up to it Heath Ledger did do a fine job, and like you said, he did win the Oscar for it. But if he won the Oscar for playing the Joker, I think Cesar Romero should have won the Oscar too in 1966. Um, I don't know who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in 1966. Hold on, I do have the most advanced bit coming. I do have the most advanced computers in all of Gotham. I could put in Best Supporting Actor. 1966. Man for all sequels. Most advanced computers in Gotham. <laughs> ah, here it is. I think those gloves are a little too big, Batman. I like rubber gloves. <laughs> Gotta eat a couple about. sandwiches, Batman. The fortune cookie one. <laughs> Walter well, I think now. Caesar should have bitch. won that year. Um, the issue I have with the movie, there's going to always be an issue is, and I've said this before, well, I've heard someone say this before. This is really when Christopher Nolan wanted to bring Batman in. Of and I always wanted the audience to be brought into of Batman instead. So... You know, with the realism in a two face looks like he actually had acid on it without being a little too cartoony. So bringing Batman into the real world, repellent, bat spray there, less real worldy. There you go. For me, that's personal. Uh, then I am going number two. We are on number two, right? Batman Begins. The origin of Batman really works in this movie. Although I've never carried a flower up a mountain before, but I have brought home some flowers for Aunt Harriet. Uh, everything is explained in this movie. Uh, the bat suit, the Batmobile, the weapons, the bat signal, everything has a backstory. Sometimes the only back 
backstory that's needed is it exists. Did, did we lose Jamie? We lost that's, Batman. Oh, that's all back. I need sometimes <laughs> to be a defensive weapon. I will say it's well done. Very well done. Um, and I do enjoy it. As Rich said, <laughs> the Scarecrow is wasted. Now, I don't know this Scarecrow character. I've never fought him. But in this movie, he is wasted. And I don't like how he just wears a mask every once in a while for a minute or two yeah. with a business suit. Right. Him, if you're going to be the Scarecrow, look like a Scarecrow. Give me exactly. the whole suit, head to toe. So the Scarecrow, Scarecrow only wears a mask with a business suit, repellent. Mm. That's Ray. There you go. Now yep. he has the whole suit, the whole thing. I would like that. that. That's a repellent we need for that film. Yeah. All right, Chris, four, three, two. All right, four, three, two. Oh, I got a couple more things. Uh, I got this a couple weeks ago. It's big book, Batman's Hundred Greatest Moments. Uh, this is a reproduction of the uh, Batman 73 Mego. I have the originals, but it's nice to have a reproduction on the shelf. This is Batman as a Shogun Warrior uh, <laughs> Japanese uh, robot. And I get a dime on every dollar. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new uh, Mego 14-inch uh, Batman figure. I have the new 8-inch uh, as well, multiples of those. And uh, I got this uh, not that long ago. It's been sitting around the, the bedroom. Uh, the, the Batman Year 2 I can't remember if it's a Target exclusive or a Walmart exclusive from uh, McFarlane Toys. Anyway, uh, real quick, number four, Batman 1989. Uh, good cast, like the Batmobile, love the bat suit and the cowl, uh, but it's too long. There's too many jokes, too much of the Joker, not enough Batman. I hate when the when the Batwing gets shot down with one fucking bullet. That's so stupid. Uh, they shouldn't have killed the Joker. And yeah, the one thing that really bothers me Batman is a fucking murderer. He must murder about 30 people, maybe more. I mean, he's just fucking driving down the streets in Gotham and he's just fucking, you're just firing off his, you know, his 50 caliber machine guns. I'm like, what? Like, this is fucking ridiculous. The, the, the whole point of you is that your, your parents were fucking gunned down and now you're just shooting people left and right, blowing up Axis chemicals with people in it. So yeah, Batman's a fucking murderer. That doesn't make any sense. Number three, The Dark Knight. Uh, I like Christian Bale. I think he's great as, as Bruce Wayne, great as Batman. I think the first 90 minutes are fucking so intense. I mean, it just burns bright. You know, and to me, this was this was Nolan uh, remaking Heat. But at the 90 minute mark, I feel it totally loses steam. After Rachel and Harvey Dent blow up, it just fucking just lo it just loses steam, man. When the you know, Joker whole... becomes a nurse, it loses steam for me. Yes, that's, that's that moment. That's it. That whole the whole last hour, Joker dresses as a nurse, blowing up the hospitals. The the nerdy guy that's trying to blackmail uh, Bruce Wayne. The whole fucking thing with the two boats. And again, the citizens have the detonator. And oh, are the citizens going to take matters into their own hands? I'm like, this is a fucking joke. And who saves the day? Tiny Lister? Fucking Zeus from No Holds Barred? Are you serious? I I mean, know, I'd, that... have I'd have blown up them people in like, like oh. two two seconds. Just so I 100%. Know. 100%. So I get great. home and go to the can. I, I, mean, I mean, when I rewatched it the other day, it's so ridiculous. Like one of the guys grabs a piece of paper from from the fucking from the wall and he's like all right we're we're, we're everybody everybody has a vote and like the now, they've only got they've got less than an hour in the next fucking scene the guy's like okay there's 547 for and 147 against i'm like wait you had 700 people that just voted plus turned their votes in and you counted 700 votes in the in the last two minutes i'm like what what the fuck so it's totally ridiculous and that ending sucks like batman like two-face just slips off the edge and he's dead and that's it plus the whole point of batman taking the rap for harvey dent makes no fucking sense the joker killed all these people so five people got killed by harvey dent just say joker killed those five people what the fuck? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. 
I hate that ending. Can I ask uh, one question? Your number one pick. Do you like that movie? Whatever movie it is. Yes. Okay. So far, you but haven't listen, liked anything. <laughs> none of these Batman movies. I said it before. None of them are great. They haven't fucking got it right yet. But I thought, you know, Dark Knight was pretty good. And I fucking, the whole thing with Batman wanting to retire over a girl. And then he's crying like a bitch when Rachel gets blown up. What a pussy. What the fuck, man? This this guy is the Dark Knight. Uh, he wouldn't fucking retire for anybody. Total bullshit. And least hot back chick eight plus two in that movie. Uh, totally. Least, I least mean, not. I kept going to the end, even if it was animated in just my voice. I kept going. Hundred percent. Listen, Batman would not fucking give it up. I don't give. A f it's the, the the whole point is so stupid. He trains for seven years. He's Batman for two years, and then he retires for eight years. That's the fucking Nolan timeline. Ridiculous. Anyway, number two, which I thought was a better movie, Batman Begins. I thought it was really well done. Um, they changed the Batman origin a little to include Ra's al Ghul, uh, which I thought was a, was a different take. I didn't like the fact that Ra's al Ghul is now not immortal. He doesn't have the hot daughter, Talia, although that comes up later. Um, they didn't bring up the whole Lazarus pit, um, but I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, good cast, and um, but overall, I, I liked it. Not my favorite, but um, in re-watching them, yeah, I thought that one was really close to the top. All right. Well, I'm going to surprise a lot of you here. My number four is The Dark Knight Rises. Oof! <laughs> I might have to go. <laughs> a movie I will never see again for the rest of the uh, I, I, I took that same oath. I broke it for Pete Pardo. <laughs> I bought it for Pete Pardo. It's, it's got you know, issues. It's $3. I, I saw it at a tag sale once for a dollar, and I still said, fuck you, and walked away. My birthday has been ruined. <laughs> We ruined Craig's 29th birthday, for Christ's right, sake. Guys. Defend it, Pete. Defend right, it. Guys. Well, here's the deal. Uh, it, it has its issues. I, I I will readily admit that. And you guys brought up a lot of them. Um, for me, you know, I, again, this is combining The Dark Knight Returns, which in The Dark Knight Returns graphic novel, Batman has been retired for 10 years and then comes... It's dumb on its own. It, combines, yeah. it combines that... It combines Nightfall, which is the first big battle with Bane, where Bane breaks the, the back of the bat. Okay, that's a huge storyline in the early 90s. And it combines No Man's Land. No Man's Land, Land yeah. And quite frankly, does it do any of them really well? No, because I, I said it before. They need to learn to stop combining so many different classic stories into one movie and just do one thing right. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Tom Hardy as an actor. He's miscast here. He's, he does a good job for what he for what he has to work with, but I would have done it a lot differently. Um, I you know the acting the action scenes are really good. Uh, I thought Catwoman was was done pretty well. She looked really good in the film. Uh, the whole ending of them taking off into the sunset. I like the fact that we finally get to see Bruce and Selena Kyle together for once, but it doesn't make any sense the way they did it. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a, it's, it, it looks great. It's big. It's epic. It's loud. It's bombastic. The big scene at the stadium is really well done. Uh, I like the fight scenes. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of plot issues and everything like that. But I like the direction. I love Christian Bale as Batman. Uh, and I think that kind of drives a lot of my love for this film. Um, yeah, it's not perfect. And, you know, maybe it's ranked a little bit high, but I enjoy it. So number four. Uh, number three for me is, what do I got for number three? Hold on. Number three is uh, Batman 89. Okay. Uh, still really fun film. Different. Michael Keaton, pretty good Batman. He's not big enough. I think that's one of my issues with like Keaton and uh, Val Kilmer and, uh, and what's his face. Like they're, they're not, they just don't really look the part, but he's good because he plays a good Bruce Wayne. He plays the rich playboy kind of asshole type of character pretty good uh jack nicholson is a fun joker um but he's just being jack right i mean mm -hmm. instead of just being the joker it's like I, I find i love jack nicholson as an actor but i have found that like in his latter stages of his career probably like the mid 80s and on every role he plays he's just being jack and i wanted a little bit more joker here um 
but it's a fun movie. It's well made. I like the gothic look of it. Gotham looks really gothic and dark, and that's what you want. Uh, Kim Basinger looks amazing in it, right? Even though her character is kind of like throwaway. So uh, yeah, it's fun. I, I dig it. So that's my number uh, three, and my number two is Batman Begins. This is great. Uh, I like that we finally get to see uh, Ray Shao Ghoul. Isn't it amazing how like you watch all these different Batman films and TV shows and animated things, and they they say the name of that character different in every single one. Is it Raz Al Ghoul? Is it Ray Shao Ghoul? Is it Raz Al Ghoul? What is it? I don't know. Uh, I spoke to uh, Neil Adams, who you know was the artist in the in the late '60s and, and early '70s, who who you know uh, drew Batman, and I asked him what is the proper pronunciation and he he said uh raz al ghul is the uh proper pronunciation De denny o'neill created the character and wrote it and he's like, like i spoke to danny on the phone and that's that's how he, he it was always raz whenever we discussed it so whenever they pronounce it and they because they do pete you're 100 right when it's raish al ghul or whatever that's technically not the correct pronunciation. You would think DC would know how the hell to pronounce yes. his name, right? And he would make 100%. sure that the films are pronouncing it correctly. It's crazy. 100%. I remember watching like the Arrow TV series and when they had this character in like a whole season and it was always Ra's al Ghul. And then, yep. you know, in this film, Raz al Ghul. It's like, well, what the hell is it? You know, it's like, whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, quite a few of the animated series have it wrong. Yeah, they have, exactly, yeah. But I mean, a really nice backstory. You get a little, you know, the whole thing with him uh, coming into the fold of the League of Assassins and trained by Raz al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul and whatnot, but then not wanting to kind of go that route and, and doing exactly what he wanted to do. I like the whole, uh, where he's working with uh, Lucius Fox's character, who I think is really great in here, played by morgan freeman and he's designing the suit and he's always coming to him asking him for you know well i could use this i could use that all the gadgets all the uh the, the vehicles really really well done here the action scenes are great um Liam neeson i think plays a really kind of good uh Ra's al ghul i think um katie holmes is great in this film i think i don't know i really like this a lot if it wasn't for my number one this would be my number one so i i think the the first two films in the Nolan series are really, really terrific. So that's my number two. And uh, let's finish it off with our number ones. My number one is Batman Begins. And uh, for a lot of the, the reasons that you, that you had just mentioned, Pete, this was besides Batman 66, this was one of the only ones where uh, the, the, I felt as if the, the length of the movie was pretty appropriate, that it, it was not, dragging or anything and that it just it moved along really well really liked the morgan freeman character how he was kind of like hey, he was the designer and like you said uh oh hey i need uh you know this uh, armament oh let me get to work on that i like the batmobile in this that it was that it was uh like a hummer almost like a non non-traditional uh type of car it doesn't have to look like a cadillac or you know or whatever as it's as it always looked before i thought that was i thought that was cool like Chris, I, I I really like Christian Bale as both the Batman and as Bruce Wayne. Just uh, I thought he out of everybody, you know, I don't know about maybe Adam West, but I mean, but I really I really enjoy the way the way that he that he does everything. And Liam Neeson, uh, I think he he classes up any movie. You know, and he you could take a totally shitty movie and you throw Liam Neeson in there and, and whatever, you know, and he makes that movie at least a little at least a little bit better. I just he's just such a, a, a good actor. Uh, his presence and everything has like moments of like kung, you know, the the show uh, kung fu, you know, tra training grasshopper, you know, to uh, you know to be the the assassin and you know and everything. I, I like that a lot. I liked. Uh, I do agree with what you guys were mentioning about Scarecrow. That yeah, yeah, it is a little you know odd seeing you know a guy in a suit. But but what? But when you would see just this, that was that, that was really cool. I liked the way the the you know the the bag looked on his head, and when the uh, victim would see would hallucinate. I thought that was really cool with uh, with everything. So I and I and I like that they picked a different uh, a different villain really uh, as compared to ones that we hadn't hadn't uh, hadn't been touched on, upon uh, yet uh, in any of the prior movies. Scarecrow and, is probably a top if not top five top ten Batman villain of all time. So you know, it was great to see him here. And after 
and after the the George Clooney uh, Batman and Robin movie, basically, you know, killed and buried this franchise. Oh yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, to have Batman Begins uh, come out with you know a new director, uh, a new Batman, and it just and to and to have it be a really enjoyable movie after the last you know three really I, at least for me were not very enjoyable. It uh, it just it's it says a lot so yeah my number one is uh batman uh, batman begins cool rich all right the first batman is i think it's still my favorite even i, I kind of questioned it because i really like my top three but i remember seeing this in the theater it was high school at the time it was huge you know you hadn't seen a batman movie on the big screen the last one was the 1966 one you know uh it was just so exciting at the time it's another nostalgia moment so i even with its little imperfections and you know it feels like it's on a sound stage and some things like that i still like uh michael keaton as batman i think he works um yeah it's it's still popcorn fun to go back to so i think just for that reason even with its minor issues here and there and it's definitely a product at a time you know by design and everything it looks like and feels like it's from the 80s i think a little bit right do you think it's has that 80s feel i guess even though it doesn't yeah. even though it doesn't have anything from pop culture i'm thinking it does it i think it it's with the whole gothic it's man, got feel prince right? and the soundtrack yeah it's got what yeah that's prince true. and the soundtrack yeah okay so aside from that i mean it still keeps that batman gothic feel to it doesn't stray from that so it doesn't really feel like it's you know from that decade yeah. but um yeah I think for all those, you know, those couple of reasons, it's something I still enjoy and a good memory. So it's at my, it's at my one, but those three, you know, my top three, it's, I like all three of those a lot. Ooh. All right, Batman, your favorite. Yeah, yeah, I am going with 1989. Batman is my number one too. I think it's the movie that started modern day superhero movies. I think this is where it starts. It has my favorite actor of all time, Jack Nicholson. Well, next to the dashing Adam West, my second favorite actor <laughs> of all time, Jack Nicholson. And if you think he's being Jack Nicholson all the time in his later career, you should see uh, about Schmidt. He is very un Jack Nicholson in that movie. One of his last movies ever, maybe a second to last movie. Um, Michael Keaton, I remember the cup I worked. I did not work. I knew someone who worked at a record store when this movie came out and the Rolling Stone cover said had Michael Keaton on it and it said, can Keaton fill the cape? Because it was a big deal. How is Mr. Mom going to be Batman? Yeah. You know, and ever since that time, I never jumped when I saw who's cast for what. Oh, he's going to be terrible. I just wait and see how it pans out. This is where it started for me. I think he does a great job as Batman. It has a nice balance between the darkness and the campiness. It's a yep. perfect blend. It is nostalgia for me too. It it feel you know what you said it feels a little 80s. I think it feels kind of timeless. You know, I can tell it was made in the 80s, but it feels timeless mm -hmm. to me. I will say it's filled with all kinds of memorable quotes. And I will say I was the first I was sitting at a table at Christmas party in 1968 with Julie Newmar. And across the way, there was a table with bowl. There was a bowl there filled with nuts. And I told Julie Newmar, I said, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. I was the first Batman to say it. Nobody <laughs> quoted me. Nobody remembers me saying it. So I just wanted to point that out there. The one problem I do have with this movie, and it's bothered me for 33 years now, is Batman cannot move his head. He cannot. Yeah, that's yes. true. That's right. This the Batman can move yes. his head. Yeah. Bat, I don't know how he got Batman. that thing off. Hey. Yeah. Oh, he actually to tore, didn't he, didn't he have to tear it? That was uh, the second uh, one. Yeah, he had to actually tear it. Yeah, the the second second one. One. Mm -hmm. So I got, uh, what what the hell is this called? Do what? not swear, <laughs> children of Gotham City. Uh Head not turning and bat suit repellent bat spray. There you go. Now the bat suit can move a little bit more flexible <laughs> like this one. There you go. Number one. <laughs> Chris. Nice. All right. Batman 66, <laughs> a.k.a. Batman the movie. Uh, that's my favorite. 
uh yeah you know it's it's completely enjoyable i think like every batman movie it's too long i mean it's it's a hundred yeah. something minutes it's too long um uh, but it's 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 a way bigger production than the tv show you know when you're watching it craig mentioned all, all the stuff all the reasons why it is a you know outdoor scenery all the vehicles it, you know it is a much uh much bigger production uh it's campy but it's it's funny you know, and it's not campy, shitty like the three, uh, you know, Batman movies in in the '90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I th- I think it's it's still totally enjoyable to me. I rewatched all ten movies for this episode. You know, the only one where when I hit stop, I was like, "Holy shit!" I would totally rewatch that movie right now. Was Batman '66? Mm-hmm. Cool. Dark Knight for me, number one. For me, it's the best in the series. It's got the best Joker on a film of all time, I think. Uh, I think he does a fantastic job. He's very true to the Joker in the comics, but again, it depends on which era you're looking at, right? I think he captures the Joker from the 80s and the 90s really, really well in the more modern day. Because the Joker back in you know the 40s and 50s and even the 70s was just a clown who laughed all the time. He wasn't very serious. He would you know shoot water out of his uh, little flower lapel and all that kind of stuff this is demented maniacal killer joker and he's also really smart too this is the joker that keeps up with batman every step of the way and makes it personal between the two of them that's what i like so much about them uh i miss katie holmes in her role in this film replaced by maggie gyllenhaal not big on her as an actress but you know whatever uh i thought that aaron eckhart as harvey dent and two-face had lots of promise. Uh, I, I He just became like kind of throwaway in this film, which I, I would have rather have had like a whole film with him as the main villain. And again, you're killing villains off again. Why? Like, why can't we just throw them in Arkham Asylum? I mean, come on, give me a break. But, uh, but yeah, again, it's got the similar traits to all these is they're all a little bit too long, but I don't really mind it. I think it's got fantastic action scenes, chase scenes, all that stuff. It's really well done. I love the way Gotham looks, love the costumes, love the gadgets, love the vehicles, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, should he have won an Oscar for this? I don't know. Uh, is he the best Joker on film to me? Yeah. And it's not even close. So uh, yeah, that's my pick for number one. And just like all the Batman films, we got a two-hour episode here. Just under, actually. All just right. under. So uh, we will say our goodbyes, everybody, so everybody can uh, go to sleep, including us. So uh, yeah. at, in the comments... Pete, yes. Pete, one more thing about next Thursday with the Monster's Den. Oh. I just want to say one last thing. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> there you go. Are you going to unmask tonight at all? Batman. I am not Michael Keaton. Okay. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> I think I have an idea who he is, though. That voice sounds very familiar. Not Bruce Wayne. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So uh, rank these as you like them in the comments below. Thanks for hanging with us. This was fun. Uh, we have been doing nothing but talking and watching Batman films again uh, for the last couple of weeks. So it'll be a nice take a little bit of break away from all the homework. And Nice uh, bat break. A nice bat break. Mm-hmm. This this is almost like when we watched all the Godzilla films, Chris. Remember that? Oh yeah. yeah. But those some of yeah. you know that, that at least I could fast forward through the talking and just get yeah. to the fight scenes. This I watched every fucking minute yeah. of all yeah. ten of these movies. Yeah. Well, because the Godzilla movies, films are like an hour and ten minutes each. These are all two hours. So I think yeah. the thirty Godzilla yeah. films equal these. You know, hundred percent. Godzilla's Revenge is like sixty nine minutes. Well, we did that. We we split that up into three episodes. You remember we the hours? To, yeah. That's true too. Yeah. yeah. Good point, Rich. And this thing's getting returned to Amazon. Shh, don't tell him. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.chtranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn, all the damn time. time. A couple more things before we go, because I've been meaning to, to mention it the entire episode, and I did not. If anybody is a fan of the 1930s serial Batman, it's 30s or 40s, I don't even remember. Uh, no, 1943 and then 1949. That's right. Those are available on DVD. I got them. Uh, those are actually kind of cool too. Very different. They're pretty good, yeah. Very violent. 
you know i mean terrible costume and all that kind of stuff but they're they're a lot of fun too if you're into that they're all in black and white and uh, they're all you know, serials like yeah. serials yeah really cool uh and i do once again want to wish craig a happy birthday hope uh, you enjoy your day, my friend Thank you, all. Thank you all. It's a, a lot of fun. I, uh, and it's great to be with you guys. Uh, not just on my birthday, but you know, every Thursday, just a lot of fun. There so good. Go. That well, means we can send Craig out for beer runs during the 24 hour show. Well, you guys can come back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my wife to make some food, you know, and so you guys can like totally come back to, to my house. And uh, uh, you know, <laughs> if there's, if there's a shitty movie, we can totally take a break. And, uh, nice. Thank you. you can jump in, jump in my Batmobile and we can jump in the, Bat uh, jump in the Craig Mobile. We'll, we'll be there in yes. seconds, right? Yes. Oh, you, you will be. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks for watching everybody for uh Batman, otherwise known as I'm not going to divulge. Rich Catino, Chris Allo, and Craig Kaminsky, the birthday boy. I am Pete Pardo. See you next week on the Monsters Den. Take care, everybody.